All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. We are continu continuing today with measurement, data display, and interpretation with measure efficiency. So this is a new way to group these ideas. And this item can be a little more challenging for some BCBAs because it's not really a traditional way about how we think about data collection and interventions. Now we know what trials to criterion are, we know what duration is, and you may even know what a cost benefit analysis is. But what we're looking at here is not only being successful and effective with our interventions, but doing it in a way that is efficient. And we're gonna talk more about what that means. As always, please subscribe for all of our updates. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So what is efficiency? Efficiency refers to the effectiveness of an intervention relative to resources consumed. In other words, did we achieve our desired outcome while making the most of our resources available? Have you ever been on a case where you're working on the same skill for months and months and months. I'm sure most of you have. It can be very frustrating. Even when we accomplish changing that behavior, right? Either teaching the skill or reducing a behavior, as good as it feels, you have to wonder, is there a was there a better way to do that? Because with most of our clients, there's a lot of things to work on. So we don't have the luxury of time because time moves quickly. And while we never want to guarantee a quick change or a quick desired change, we still want to be efficient. We want to be effective, but utilize our time wisely. If your client only gets nine hours a week, we want to use those nine hours to the best of our ability. And that's what efficiency is looking at. It's looked at looking at the interventions performance, right? How is that intervention performing as far as behavior change? Is it taking a long time to train or teach? How many trials to mastery? Are we running 400 trials before mastering a simple task? If we are, is there something we can change? What are we giving up by using the intervention? And we talk about a cost benefit analysis. This is what we mean. Yes, maybe our intervention brings some benefit, but at what cost? This helps us manage our time, staff, and other resources wisely. And as BCBAs, this is going to be, for a lot of you, something new. You're not just, you're not an implementer anymore, necessarily, right? Now you're a manager. You're training, you're designing, and you've got to think about these things. What are my resources available? How many hours do I have? What is my staff capable of? What do we have at our disposal? And how can I use these things to achieve our goals efficiently? Let's start with trials to criterion because it's one most likely you're most familiar with, right? This is the number of response opportunities or learning trials required to achieve a predetermined performance level or criterion. In other words, how many attempts did it take to reach mastery? If our goal is 80% across two consecutive sessions, how many trials did it take to get there? And this might look as simple as we want three checks in a row, right? And so we go check, check, X, X, check, X, check, check, check. How many trials to criterion? This is our criterion. It took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine trials to criterion. So that's our trials to criterion. Nine. If it's measuring, measuring the efficiency of the instruction. In other words, if I'm trying to get three checks in a row and I am at 150 trials, Let's try something different maybe, because we are not being efficient at all. A lower number of trials indicates a more efficient program or a faster learning rate. Now, let's not get this confused. The, the goal isn't just to go as quick as possible. We still want to be effective, but you've got to find a balance between effective right, and efficient. We can't just spin our wheels on the same thing over and over again. Right. We've got to always be evaluating. Could we be do, doing any better? Another example, a student is learning to identify 10 new sight words. Intervention A, we're using flashcards. 
we reach criterion in 50 trials. Intervention B, computer program, we reach criterion in 35 trials. Intervention B is more efficient. So now we have another use. We can compare interventions, right? And when we get the cost benefit, this is going to be a good thing. If we take this, if we just look at this data, data show that B is better. What's the cost benefit of using a computer program? Is it more expensive and time consuming than the flashcards, even though it's more effective? Again, as the BCBA, these are the decisions you need to make. So let's talk about a cost benefit analysis, a systematic approach to determine the financial and non-financial cost of an intervention versus the benefits it produces. If you're familiar with the cost benefit analysis, you're probably thinking in terms of a business idea, right? Typically, what does it cost us and what is going to come of it, right? If it costs us $10,000 for this program, what kind of benefit are we going to receive for that $10,000? Now, as a BCBA, it's not necessarily about money or economics, right? Because we're also looking at benefits of the intervention and effectiveness. So let's think about this from a cost benefit approach. You might be looking at what are you paying your therapist relative to their hours worked, their travel, their training. What are your indirect costs? How about time spent with family members, opportunity costs? So if you're spending or your your therapist is spending an hour per session with family members talking, what are we wasting by building that rapport? What could it be done instead? that nice balance. Benefits. What about reduction in challenging behavior, new skills, quality of life? What about indirect benefits, increased independence, improved social relationships? In other words, we're going to compare all these things. I pay my therapist X amount, takes this long to get there, it takes this much training. We have to spend a lot of time with family members when we're there, but we're seeing a rapid acquisition of new skills. So the cost there may not outweigh the benefits. Or let's say we're not really seeing a lot of progress, but we're paying a lot of money, training a lot, spending a lot of time with family members. What can we change? How can we start to level this relationship out? Or let's think about an analyst who might weigh the cost of a high-tech intervention. So let's say an expensive application to teach reading against potential benefits. If it costs us $300 a month for an application, but all of our clients are showing rapid skill improvement, then maybe the cost is worth it because of the benefit. Training duration. It's a straightforward measure of efficiency that refers to the total amount of time an intervention takes to achieve a goal. It's really that simple, right? How long did the intervention take? If we need three check marks, it took us 45 hours, right, a session to get three check marks. Is that efficient? Maybe, maybe not, right? But that's duration, it's very simple. We're starting from the start of the intervention to the mastery. A shorter duration indicates indicates a more efficient procedure. So let's take two interventions. Intervention A, four weeks of daily 30 minute sessions versus two weeks of daily 30 minute sessions to teach, teach the same skill. What's gonna be more effective? Well, likely intervention B. So training duration is is going to be the simplest of these three ideas, but it's still going to give you a good idea of how many hours you're spending maybe to achieve a goal. So efficiency in practice. Let's think about this. A BCBA does not always conduct a formal economic analysis, but we do need to consider efficiency. Let's ask, which procedure is going to get us to the goal in the fewest trials? How many procedures do we have? What's going to get us there? the quickest. So in other words, how many trials is it going to take? How much time is it going to take? Then we take those interventions and think about, okay, at what cost, right? If our best intervention is very expensive and time consuming, maybe it's not worth the benefit. Is there a less expensive intervention that is still effective that we can use instead? So that's how these three can kind of play together. And this all seems very overwhelming and complicated, but in practice, you're going to start to do this naturally. You're going to have different interventions, different choices, and you're going to start to see my therapists are capable of this. I have this much time. I have these resources, and you're going to start to make better decisions that way. 
Efficiency measures help ensure that interventions are not only effective, but practical and sustainable for all involved. End of the day, we have a lot of clients. We have limited hours. We have limited resources. We want to make the most of it for everybody we're helping. We want to be efficient. Thanks for watching. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com. Please subscribe. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.